Hi everyone, what's up? Today I want to go over the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So, the second fundamental theorem of calculus says that if you have any function, I'm going to say we have g of x, and g of x is going to be a very interesting function, it's going to be a function uh, that is basically a definite integral from a with upper bound x, and it's going to have an integrand of the function f of t dt, and uh, if we have this function and f is continuous, so uh, I'm going to write parentheses if f is continuous, so if f continues, then g prime of x, so g prime of x, is going to be equal to f of x, okay? So this is the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, it might be a bit abstract and, you know, kind of messy. These are, you know, a lot of symbols. But let me try to explain what, what all, all of this means. So g, first of all, g is not going to be as any function that you already know. You can see that g is going to be written in terms of an, a definite integral. And basically what g represents is that I'm going to try to give you a good picture. So say we have something like this. Now we're going to have a curve. Uh, now g is going to have a constant a. Okay. So we're going to say a is here. And this is going to be, you know, our lower bound. Now, G is going to represent the area from A to an arbitrary point, X, that you can choose under the, the graph of F of T, okay? So, this is F of T. This curve, you know, this is quickly curve, is going to be F of T. And if you want to represent the area from A to an arbitrary point, which is going to be X, so we can say this is X, and this is, you know, this is going to be the area that represents... Uh, the, this is going to be the area under, under the, a, the graph of f is going to represent uh, the value of g evaluated at x, okay? So that is how you can interpret this function g, okay? Pretty much x is going to be a value that is moving, and g will represent the area up until that x value, okay? Or all the way from a, okay? So that is how you can interpret g. Now, just as any function... If we want to, you know, study the function, if we want to more, if we want to know more properties about this function, usually, well, we like to know its derivatives. Now, how can we take the derivative of a function that is an integral? Well, we can, you know, go to the second fundamental theorem of calculus and refer to the fact that the derivative of g is going to be f of x. Okay. Now, f is going to be whatever function you have in the integrand. Now, what is the role of t? T is simply going to be a placeholder variable. Yeah, sometimes people call it a dummy variable, okay? It's just going to be a variable that is going to, you know, it's not going to have a very relevant function. It's a variable that we need because we need to have something explicit in the integrand. We need to, have, we need to write something in the integrand, and we're going to write it in terms of T because we can't write it in terms of X. Otherwise, then, well, you know, this G would be a function with respect to the integrand and the upper bound, and that's going to be really messy. So we write t, we use a variable t just as a dummy variable, okay? So I'm going to give you an example, and you'll see how t works, okay? But this is pretty much the main overview of FTC2. Now, another way in which you, you usually see it written is that uh, the derivative, I am going to write it, so the derivative uh, with respect to x of the function uh, of the, well, of the definite integral from a, 2x of the function f of t dt, well, this derivative is going to be equal to uh, small f of x, okay? So pretty much, if you're taking the derivative of a function that is an integral, well, you can grab the integrand and replace anywhere that you see a dummy variable t or any other letter, anywhere that you see that dummy variable, well, you can just plug in x, okay? And that is going to be the derivative. Now, um, I'm gonna, I want to show you something that it's not a proof at all. This is not a proof of the uh, of FTC2, but I think it's, a, it's an expression that allows you to develop some intuition or to feel more comfortable uh, of the reasons why this is true. Okay, I think that's how I should phrase it. So let me show you something. Uh, we know that, you know, this is going to be a function and we apply the derivative operator d over dx to functions, okay? So we know this is legal. Now, if we want to, you know, deco de uh, decompose or try to do something with this expression, well, we could try to, you know, compute this, the definite integral with respect to x, okay? So we can try to rewrite 
this definitely integral with respect to x somehow. Now, based on the first fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that this definitely integral is going to be the antiderivative of small f, which I'm going to write it as big F, evaluated at x. So here we're, you know, we're uh, we're still maintaining the behavior of a function. This is still this is still has an input, so this is not a constant or not, or, or a definite value. This is still a function. So we have the antiderivative of x minus the antiderivative of a small f evaluated at a. Okay. And now we want to take the derivative of this expression. Okay, so I'm going to write it like this. Okay, so we want to grab this sub, this you know this function and take its derivative, of course with respect to x. Okay, so I'm going to write here uh, with respect to x. So we know f of a is going to be a constant. Okay, it doesn't matter uh, what function you have here. It's a derivative evaluated at a is going to be a constant. We know the derivative of a constant is equal. To zero okay so we pretty much can forget we, we can forget about f of a and now we can just say that the only thing that we have is the derivative with respect to x of the anti-derivative of the small f okay which is pretty much this okay this should be a parenthesis let me write that again so we have here uh, let me fix this yep so we have here the derivative of the antiderivative of f, okay? And now I think it's pretty easy to see what this is equal to. Well, this is equal to f again, okay? Because, you know, when we went from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, we anti-differentiated it, and now we're differentiating again. So if we, if we got that the antiderivative of f, small f, equals big F, then, well, the derivative of f is going to be equal to office of big F. This is going to be equal to small f, okay? small f that looks like a p let me write that again that looks like rho so this is going to be equal to small f okay so f of x okay great so you know this is uh this is not a proof of the second fundamental theorem of calculus but this is i think you know this chain of this this chain of equations can give you some intuition into why this is true or at least computationally you can see that it works out we get that the derivative of this uh, this integral is going to be the function that we have in the integrand with respect to the variable that we're integrating with respect to, okay? So yeah, that is, you know, that, that is how it goes and I think this can be helpful, okay? So yeah, that's been the entire video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that I have, you know, I have been able to explain what the, what the FTC2 is in an effective way and yeah, that's been the entire thing. So see you in the following video. Bye.